Hello and welcome everybody. Today I'm going to give you a quick rundown on what I look for when editing black and white photos and I'm going to take this raw file right here and I'm going to turn it into a very dramatic and kind of gloomy contrasty black and white picture just like that while of course as always showing you every single step from the start to finish. Start displaying your pictures in a professional way with SmugMug. SmugMug allows you to build your very own photography portfolio without any coding knowledge required from less than $3 a month. Check out the link in the video description to learn more and to get your 14 day free trial today. Alright, so first thing of course, gonna put the picture into black and white and I really tried to shoot this picture in an exposure where it would still have a lot of the shadow detail and a lot of the bright and highlight detail. And if you go to the histogram here, even if the picture might seem a little bit contrasty and especially too bright, in the histogram we see that we have both all of the highlight detail and the vast majority of the shadow detail as well. So in terms of the editing I'm actually gonna first of all before I do anything else just grab a graduated filter and drag it over the sky and fix the exposure in the sky. So once again because we don't have anything clipped in the highlight parts initially I can bring down the exposure here for the sky and we still have all of the detail without anything clipped whatsoever. So I'm just going to do that really quick here just to kind of equivalate the exposure. I'm going to go um, back to this graduated filter, add contrast and all of that stuff to really make the sky look great. But this is once again just about the exposure. So then to the global adjustments, I really wanna, you know, I have a little trick here. So I really like to raise the shadows by a hundred in my black and white pictures and then bring down the blacks by quite a lot. And what this will do is give you a very contrasty and very kind of dark, just kind of overall look. So I really like that. And if you see here, if I would just bring the shadows down to zero, it would just be completely black. And that is not what I'm going for here. I don't want just a silhouette. So that's a really a great way to still preserve some of the shadow detail, but at the same time, make everything very contrasty. So I'm just going to leave it here. Also, I'm going to bring down the highlights so we retrieve even more of the highlight detail. And you see, especially in the sky, but especially in the foreground as well, you see how everything just becomes a little bit more clear and more distinctive. Then clarity is kind of, you know, a lot of people really like plus clarity and I do think it works really great for the sky, but for the foreground, it just is a little bit, it's almost too much. It really pronounces all of these textures and the waves too much. So in fact, I'm actually just going to leave that at zero. And in terms of the contrast, you know, by adding more contrast, it would just make the whole picture, especially this rock right here, too dark and I don't think that works all that well either. So I'm going to actually leave the contrast and clarity both at zero, which is probably not a thing that you would expect from going for a contrasty look, but that's really, you know, you can do it in multiple ways. And this is really, I think, a little bit of a better and more adjustable way. So then let's go into the whites and just bring that one up a little bit to get a bit more overall dynamic. And you see from before to after, it really creates a lot more differentiation from the dark to the bright parts. And then I'm gonna go down to the tonal curve and the tonal curve is kind of the, well, the very fine adjustments of the global adjustments. So for example, the highlight slider, I really like to bring that one to the right in pretty much all of my pictures. And you can see it really just enhances the very bright parts. Whereas for example, the highlight slider and the basic adjustments it kind of affects the entire bright parts of your photo, but the highlights down here have really just an effect on these very bright parts already, as I said, and that way you get a lot of dynamic and I absolutely love that tool. So once again, before the highlight slider in the tonal curve and here is after. Then the rest, I don't really have a set tactic, just play around with it, stick with, with whatever you like best. And I don't really think there's too much needed, maybe, well, the shadows, just bring them up a slight bit. 
and I think that works pretty well. So here's before the tonal curve, here's after. So you see it kind of has a big impact, but at the same time it's nothing major just as exposure or whatever. It's really kind of the fine areas of the Euro global picture. So then I think I'm actually going to go back to the graduated filter that I've added previously in the sky with the minus exposure, just so the sky doesn't look as overexposed. As you can see, this would not work at all. But luckily, because I shot draw, I still have all of that detail in the sky. So then I'm going to add some contrast once again, just for the graduated filter that affects the sky. And I really want to bring out this texture and this darkness and everything in these clouds because it is a very dark, gloomy and stormy overall picture. So I'm just going to go into the plus contrast to something like that. And I'm also going to add a little bit of clarity, although you don't want to overdo it with clarity. So I think that already looks pretty good. Here is before the contrast and the clarity and here is after and you see it's just a lot more pronounced and I do like the look quite a bit. Then there are some other things you could also play around with the highlights for example if you would really want to fine tune something just for the sky. And you can even bring up or down the shadows, which is something you might want to do if you really want very dark clouds while still not affecting the bright parts, so you don't really make everything way too dark as uh, you would, for example, with exposure. But in this case, I think there's not really any necessity for that. So then let's go out of this graduated filter and actually grab a new one for the bottom. And I'm just going to create one with a very soft edge and just go slightly into the minus exposure. I really think the bottom right especially was a little bit too bright. So afterwards, let's go into the global adjustments again. And once again, I don't want to cover all of these tools. Um, there's certainly a lot more that you could take advantage of but I want to keep the video relatively compact. So I'm actually going to go straight away down into the effects tools and I'm going to add some vignetting here. Vignetting is really a great thing. You should absolutely at least try it out. And especially in black and white pictures in probably 95% of my black and white pictures, I really find vignetting to work really well. So I'm just going to go a little bit into the minus. I don't want to make any drastic adjustments here. So around minus 15, minus 18 do the job pretty well. And I'm also going to bring the midpoint more towards the center. So the whole area of the vignetting is a bit bigger if I show you here with the extreme example by bringing the midpoint a little bit more towards the center, you really get a lot more vignetting while not making it look overdone. So then the last thing is actually feather and I'm just going to bring that one to the right and that really just softens the feather and makes everything a lot more smooth, the whole transition from the vignetting to the rest of the picture. So let's just reset that to the normal value here and show you from before any vignetting and here's after it really makes everything look a lot darker and I absolutely love it. And a thing that you can actually also do is just grab another graduated filter and go over the very top of your picture and go a little bit into the minus exposure. And that way it's kind of like closing out your picture, an additional way of adding vignetting. But it does actually work, especially in black and white pictures, because it really makes the viewer's eye contain within the picture. And as a very last thing, I'm just going to add some dodge and burning. Honestly, just with plus exposure because I don't really see any necessity for any um, negative exposure to make the shadows even darker. But I'm just going to grab a radial filter right here, make sure the feather is to 100 and just add a little bit of plus exposure and then just drag it over several areas of the picture, which are kind of dull, not as interesting and hopefully make them a bit more interesting, uh, just add a little bit more complexity in the lighting. So just going to make this a real quick here because it's not really a picture where there's too much opportunity for dodge and burning, but just some spots might could actually benefit from it. So once again, just add a few small bands here on the cliffs as well. So there's some differentiation within the cliffs themselves. 
So I think that's actually pretty much it. Maybe last one over here. And yeah, let's just say, well, maybe I'm actually gonna grab uh, an adjustment brush right here, go a little bit into the minus contrast and just brush over this cliff and then grab another one, go into the plus shadows just for the left part right here. And I think that works even better. So let's just say that I'm done. Of course, there's a lot more fine adjustments that you could do. You could zoom in and really make everything look as you would want it to look like. But I think, um, you know, even if I would edit another 20 minutes on this picture, the difference at the end would be very minor and really just in the detail. So here is the history and this is where we started at, the raw file. And here's the picture converted into black and white without any further adjustments. And you just see it's very, way too contrasty, too bright. And even within the dark parts, it's just too dark and not really any differentiation. And this is the picture at the very end. Maybe I've just added a bit too much clarity here on the sky. But overall, I definitely think it's a really good looking picture and I actually really like it. And that is pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, if you have any feedback or any questions, just leave in the comments down below. And also, if you would like to see more videos just like this one, then don't forget to subscribe. Anyways, have a great day and as always, take care.